today, as you can tell, last week I was like, man, we're moving on up. I had a guest on Zoom, and in my office, I have a microphone, but it really, like, I can never get it to work properly, so I just put it there kind of as a prop. <laughs> it's almost like my signal, like I have something to say. Listen to me. The audio, this is not, this is just my signal, like something's coming. Uh, so, and I felt big time because I had somebody else on it with me. And now we're in the studio, which is it's so nice. So here. fancy. And I have a guest in person, my friend, I almost said Lindsay Wilder, but Lindsay Wilder Newland. Yes. I'm acting like you just got married yesterday, but <laughs> when my friends get married, years. I just can't like the crossover of name change. Well, I was Lindsay Wilder for a long time. In, into my thirties. Yeah. And well, then, you're still Lindsay yeah. Wilder in my phone. So, don't tell well, Alex. And legally, I'm still Lindsay Wilder. Does not surprise. I just me. added Newland onto oh, the end of it. Okay, got it. So, but Lindsay and I have been friends for a long time. I really yeah, don't know like for how long. About ten years. <gasps> for real? Yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, so we've been friends for ten years. Weird. And she <laughs> is one of the most incredible people that I know. When I say that she can do anything I mean that she can legitimately do anything she can do your hair teach you about marketing and probably like sand a dresser and refinish it for you <laughs> and train your dog like and do this with her baby on her hip but she uh, is somebody that I was so excited to get in here because um not only is Lindsay just amazing as a human but she has such a unique life path and I think we connect on that um she like I said she's been to beauty school and has done so much in that industry for so long she had an untraditional path to her bachelor's degree which I also did and she's a mom she's a wife and as of last October October she's a small business owner yes and that's just, you know, who knows what we're going to hit on today, but we're definitely going to have some uh, good stories and good insight from our friend, Lindsay. I like cue the <laughs> clapping there, but yeah, thanks for making the long trip over here. Oh yeah. It was all of five minutes <laughs> from my house. But no, I, I, like I said, I do not know honestly where this conversation is going to go because it's we always have good conversation, but when, when you put this I and know. that, it's yeah. like what's going to happen. For so. Sure. But I want to talk about something. I want to I want to just kick off with whenever I thought like, hey, I want to have Lindsay come on. The first thing that I thought about is you always call me your personal cheerleader. Yes. And that's how she describes my job to people is like, <laughs> what does Lauren do? She just like cheers she's a, people she's a on hype woman. and a hype woman and <laughs> makes them start things. Yeah. And so with you, I thought a fun thing for us to cover would be why is it so hard to just get started? And I know some people that watch are business owners or aspiring entrepreneurs. And some people maybe just want to wake up 30 minutes <laughs> earlier and yeah. I don't know, exercise. So I I just think that it's interesting, like, because you are such a go-getter in like every other way. And so am I, but when it comes to your own thing, like your own change, it's so hard to just get started. Yeah. So tell us a little bit. First, tell us what Bell Mead, Bell Mead Designs is her business. So follow them on Instagram. Uh, and I want you to tell us like about what Bell Mead is, and then we can talk about the getting started part. Okay. So Bell Mead Designs is my business. Um, and we, as of right now, we are just focusing in on holiday decor. Um, so the idea kind of came to me um, because the world is so busy. We've all gotten so busy. And I think that's a good thing and a bad thing. You know, we have literally the world at our fingertips with our phones and right. computers. Um, but it's kind of taken away from some of the more traditional things that we used to do. One of which was Christmas decorations. Yes. And I love Christmas. And She's I, an elf. Yeah, I am a Christmas elf. <laughs> I always have been. Um, and I, I say I come from a long line of Christmas crazy women. Yeah. <laughs> um, but not this past year, the year before. We'd had a really difficult year. Um, my husband and I, um, we had lost a pregnancy at 21 weeks. And I was kind of hitting that second stage of grief yeah. as the holidays came. And it was really hard for me to get excited about that, um, about the, you know, the decorating and doing everything that I usually so much look forward to. Right. And I had the thought it would really be nice if there was somebody that could come in and take what I have and just put it up for me. Yeah. We were also moving at the time. And so I didn't really feel like I could take 
the time and the the you know the money mm-hmm. that we needed to to actually do that do what you um need and to. And so out of that, I didn't know at the time, but an idea was born. I actually looked it up and there was nobody in our area that did that kind of thing. Yeah. And so, um, fast forward to this past year and, um, I kind of just like, for lack of a better way to put it, kind of like riffed on the idea a little bit Mm -hmm. in my own head. We love a good riff. Uh, Yeah. We love a good riff. (laughs) (laughs) Um, and it kind of, you know, kind of streamlined the, the thought on it. And of course, I had already established that there was a hole in the marketplace, that there was a need for this. Yes. Um, it's going to only appeal to a certain type of person, yeah. to a certain demographic, but there was it's nobody it. there doing it. So then came the idea of, you know, what are the, the barriers for people to do this themselves? So mm-hmm. convenience, money, l- lack of creativity, and lack of desire. Yes. Um, and so I thought, well, if I can go in and do this for people, and even if they participate in it or, mm-hmm. you know, we uh, put together curated boxes so that people can do it themselves because yes. some people enjoy that. They just don't want to like pick out all the stuff. I yeah. Mean. They don't want to do that. And then especially with COVID this past year, you know, Christmas around here, especially in our area was very like a very scary time with COVID. The numbers yes. were really high. Yes. It was the worst and so sure. I thought, well, a lot of people probably don't want to have to go out and make the 50 trips back and forth. to the all So the I'll do stores. it. So I'll do it for them. <laughs> Um, but we put together these curated boxes and, um, that we could just ship out and Mm -hmm. then I put together a little video so that people could figure out how to do it themselves the way that, you know, the way that I decorate trees. And then I also did custom services for people and went into their homes and did it for them. Yeah. A literal elf in there. And the insoles are so beautiful. So if you found her on Instagram, you'll be able to see all that stuff. But I don't know. I just think it's fun. It's just an interesting, like. I love it. One day, one day, when my podcast <laughs> makes it big, I'll let you come put a Christmas tree in my house. Until then, I'm using my very old Target one. No, but fine. I love it. And I think what's so interesting to me is that we always hear like people's stories in boxes. So it's like, I had an idea and then I just decided to start it and then I just had a business. But that's no, that's like the elevator, <laughs> like ah, everything's fine when the flames are like right. behind you and you're like, yeah. I'm not going to make yeah. it. Um, so I want, like, we had so many conversations of just getting you to, like, you had, right. like, you riffed on the idea. We're cool now. We say riff. <laughs> but you riffed on the idea, and it was just the, that getting you started piece. Yeah. I remember just sitting in your living room and making a list and, like, this is what, if you do not do this, we are not friends anymore. Yes. That's how I have to threaten people's lives to, like, <laughs> make movement on the business side right. of things. So I don't know. But, but it's not just, like I said, everybody's not going to start a business and everybody's not an aspiring entrepreneur or current entrepreneur, but we all want to, I think everybody has something inside of them that they want to do, whether you want to get more involved at your church or join the board of a nonprofit or literally just put down sodas. Right. Why is it, why do you think it's so difficult to just start something? Well, I I think for me, um, I am a really, I'm really good at big picture thinking. Yes. Um, I, I like an end goal Mm -hmm. um, and I get really fired up in the beginning of something. Right. Um, But I'm not so great when it comes to the details and that bogs me down a lot to the point where I feel like it really stifles my creativity and my passion for things. Yes. So, um, and it's hard for me to break that down into digestible bites, so to speak, for myself. Somebody else can do that for me, and then I can, and then I can start to get fired up about those little details and those little stepping stones right, that you get can, us to the end Because you can see, yes. Yeah. So that's one big thing. I think the other thing is that is a motivation killer for me um, is when you hear those stories of people that are like, oh, yeah, well, I had this great idea, and... And then it just was, and yeah. and before you know it, and now and I'm on the floor. Yeah, list. in less than a year, I have a hundred thousand Instagram followers oh, yeah. and a great business, and I made six figure income. Yeah, that is great, and that stuff does happen. But I'm much more inspired by learning the details. I heard yeah. something someone say the other day. Um, that we often hear about these like mountaintop experiences mm. and they're so great and they can be really motivational in their own right. But we don't see all of the struggles that it took to get there. And sometimes that makes it feel like it's unattainable for yes. us if we don't gain instant traction. Yes. So in my case, I had on a couple of very distinct days, 
already completely canned the idea of this business yeah. before it ever even started, before anybody ever even knew what was going on. You and I had that conversation. Mm-hmm. I had a conversation with another family friend of ours and I was telling her about it. And I said, but you know, I just don't know if people are going to like it. And, um, at the time I was working hard to, to pick out what was going to go in the boxes and like mm-hmm. stick with the themes. Yes. And I was really kind of struggling with that. And I said, you know, I just don't know. And she said, so have you marketed at all? And I said, no, not yet. She said, have you told anybody? I was like, well, you know, my close friends know. And she was like, so what you're saying is you're ready to quit, but you haven't really started. started. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah, I have. That's exactly I, what I'm saying. You know, and I think for me, though, too, the big side of that is, um, number one, it's not an instant gratification. Nobody's path is that straight and that wonderful. Yeah. Um, there Never. are always those ups and downs. And so I think that we get discouraged by that when it doesn't take off immediately and we don't have that immediate success. Um, So you have to be realistic about your goals. Mm -hmm. Um, The second thing for me is, wait, I forgot. What the second? Do, 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 do. <laughs> well, while you're thinking of that, I'm going to touch back on something interesting okay. that you said. Let's uh, have a tally for how many times I say interesting. You said, "Will when you were thinking about starting this business, you said, w- will anybody like it? Yeah. And it is important when you're starting a business from the business aspect of it. It's like, is there a market? Are people going to buy it? Like that's mm-hmm. business 101. But... When you're starting something, whether it's for yourself, a goal for yourself, personal goal, if it's a business, like even if there's a market for it, if you don't like it and it doesn't make you feel happy, you won't sustain it. And so I think that's a big thing that I'll catch myself in sometimes. It's like, what are people going to think? And I say, I'm not a people pleaser. I don't care what people think about me. I forge my own path. But we all are. Yes, you do. And I think even if it's subconscious, like sometimes I have to peel back about a lot of layers and think, oh, the reason I'm not starting that thing is because... I'm worried about if other people will like yes. it, even though I like it and it's my life and it makes right. me feel happy. Yeah. So that's a big thing. Um, I think for me, I have a tendency and I always have, and it's something that I've, you know, in my adult years, I have started to recognize. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would do it all the time when I was younger. It's like, if I only kind of halfway do it, if I don't completely devote myself to it and I don't go all in with Mm -hmm. it then if it fails I don't feel like such a failure because in my mind I think well I didn't really do it to the best of my ability yes um but if I do it to the best of my ability and it fails then I feel so exposed Mm -hmm. you know I feel like oh my gosh that was absolutely the best I could give and it flopped yeah you know and so um that I think is part of it but but again what a really crummy way to think about things and look at things because then you spend your whole life going well you know I never ever really did anything to live up to my full potential yeah because I was scared you know afraid to be vulnerable yes um and so I think that's the biggest thing about it is the vulnerability of it Mm -hmm. and we all now everything is so um publicized everything that we do yes um (laughs) if you don't put it on social media like it didn't really happen yeah or it'll even if you don't like celebrate your like lows somebody's gonna find out like um it's yeah I know and you know I I think always in the back of my mind I and I think it's it's a very um I think we have a tendency to think poorly of ourselves maybe in the way that we think of other people yes um so it's like okay so do I do I look at other people and think, well, they're not qualified to do that? Yeah. What a big, who do they think they are? Yeah. You know, maybe honestly, sometimes, yeah. you know, I think that's just human nature yeah. is to it underestimate is. people. Yes. Um, but I'm really, really hard on myself and I really underestimate myself a whole lot. Yes. Um, and so I think that the biggest thing is saying to myself, get myself pumped up to say, I'm going to give it everything I have. And then if it fails, it fails, but yeah. I've still left nothing on the table. Yes. You know, I don't have any regrets about it. So trying to shift my focus, um, and be real again, be realistic about your goals, Yeah, you know, because starting out and saying, I want to make a profit in my first year, that's a really big thing yes. in business. You know, most businesses <laughs> yes. don't turn a profit. I don't know what the average would be, but I certainly know that the average is I'm, not within a year. No, it's not. And even now that I'm kind of in the tech world, it's looking more in like, oh, maybe we'll make a profit in three years. Yeah. Oh, wait, the next day, maybe we'll make a profit right. in five years. And that's it can feel like right. daunting, yes, yeah. in whatever you're doing, the profit thing. But the well, what we talk about on this podcast, all five episodes, <laughs> this is episode number five, and I'm proud, is 
I talk a lot about failure because I don't feel like I have reached expert level of anything no. except failing and surviving it. That's what I tell people all the time. They're like, oh, you're, you can do anything. You can do that. I'm like, I am not good at anything. Yeah. I'm just stupid enough to keep trying things and I've done enough wrong. Yeah. You know, I l- or try to learn from my mistakes and, you know, so it, usually if I give people advice, it's not because I've done it that way. It's because I did it the opposite way and it didn't work. Oh, <laughs> for sure. And so that's what like a big thing that we try to do on the Ripple Effect yeah. podcast is, is talk more about failure. And I can't take the credit for this quote. So my, the queen of my literal little business heart is Sarah Blakely and I cannot wait to meet her because I'm going to hell or high water (laughs) it's going to happen but she talks about when she was when her and her brother I think maybe just one brother were kids when they would sit at the dinner table every night their dad would specifically say okay guys what'd you fail at today and I heard that years ago when I first started listening to podcasts and stuff like that and I thought How cool is that, that they celebrated failure from like a young age on. And I think without even realizing it, that like planted a seed in me. And so that is why, I mean, I've talked about my epic nervous breakdown on here and there's still people, there's still people that don't understand what I went through and have things to say about it, whatever, you know what, Who I don't care, but the people that rally around you and support you, like, yeah, I did go all in on something to the point that I moved, left my family, left my friends, that was plan A, B, C, D, all the way through Z, and it didn't work, it failed, and I'll always say, yeah, it failed, the business failed, and everybody's like, oh no, sweetie, it's not a failure, like, it, it got you to hear, yes, failure is it's still okay to call it a failure. The business failed my expectations. Doesn't mean it didn't teach me something. Doesn't right. mean it didn't get me to here. But it did epically flop because of me. And I'll, it's okay. I'm cool with it. The thing that Alex, my husband, always <laughs> says to me is fail forward. Yes. You know, and so when I would be kind of like in the doldrums about how things were going, didn't feel like we were getting any traction, you know, a little bit stressed about it. He would say, if this fails, and in his he loving really and logical an mind a logical little angel oh my gosh Alex so <laughs> logical he looked at me one day and I said Alex but what if it fails and he said statistically speaking Lindsay this business will fail yeah and I was like <laughs> way to bring the encouragement I, said, I feel terrible and better all at the same time because you said that <laughs> to me it was just it was freedom in my mind, because we had put our personal money into starting this mm-hmm. business, of course. And it was freedom in my mind that if it did fail, I wasn't going to let him down. Yes. Because not that he was banking on my failure, but the statistical likelihood of a business failing is, you know, is very pretty high. significant. Yeah. Um, and so he's, you know, but it also made me realize like, oh man, I am going to be heartbroken if it does fail. And so again, I had to give everything to it and leave nothing on the table because he said, if we fail, we just, another buzzword, we just pivot. Yes. We just have to l- let yeah. the business go where it wants to go and follow the natural trajectory of it. Yes. And not consider it true failure. We have failed forward yes we have failed to make a different path we have yeah you know and so I think that that's the thing too nobody talks about their failures though it's so no (laughs) uh, it's no it's it's because everybody's gonna have something to say about it yeah but in the end you have to really examine the reasons for doing what you're doing yes whether it's you know like you said waking up earlier or you know going to exercise or sitting down soft drinks which I recently have tried to cut back on myself <laughs> it's very hard me too um Meanwhile, yeah I've got I a like, coke under the table I'm like um yeah but it's you know it's really hard to do those kinds of things but we have to always examine what do we consider success yes. um, and what do we define as failure and the the definition of failure for me personally I think is very different than what the general public would perceive as failure yes because like you I would agree. um if you have learned something then it can't be a total failure, you know? And I think that um, there are a lot of elements in my life that have taught me that, that um, it's okay for things to not look the way that you thought they would. Yeah. As long as you can learn from that and do better next time when you're given the opportunity. You know, I think so that, that in my mind, I've had to redefine failure. Yes. I think that's good. And I think that's a good takeaway for anybody listening is like, you can define failure however you want to. You don't have to take like 
what is commonly known as failure or what the world says failure is like what's failure to you failure to me is not giving something my all right and so I you know I can live with another business flopping a lot better than I can live with just knowing that I didn't give just it an idea that in I your head yes. or you know not even getting started on it or or worse yet watching somebody else run with that idea yes that is that's not just failure that's painful yeah Jordan's back in here and I've given her another <laughs> shout out because people know about you and I'm gonna she's gonna be on the other side of the stage ah. soon but Jordan knows she saw me literally at whenever I was starting Ripple about a year and a half ago there was <laughs> I was kind of in a lull where I knew I was so restless because I knew I wasn't giving it everything I had because I was just like having personal limiting beliefs or afraid of what people were going to say or I, I, I don't know. There was just so many things or just sitting down and taking the time to write out action steps of like, mm -hmm. it's I'm not going to get to the finish line unless I take step one, step two, step three. And we kind of talked about that. But Jordan saw there was a girl that started something, I won't even say similar at this point, but she was targeting college students at a mental it's hard. I, I like stormed out of the Same door. I was thing like, happened to me. <laughs> flipping Same thing. the table. There's a girl and, and she, you know, and I will say, I mean, I, I, I by no means took her business idea, but I really have admiration and respect for her taste and for yes. her style. And she launched some boxes this year. I'm not even in the same ballpark. I'm not even the same planet as her. So it's not like we were going to be competition. Yeah. Any stretch of the imagination, but I thought, <gasps> that's my idea, the boxes. And it was, she launched hers, I don't know, maybe a week, two weeks before I launched mine. Yeah. And they weren't the same. They, they yeah. you know, mine is like a whole, like curated, like to put this on your tree. Hers yeah. was like just Christmas the things, you know, like random ornaments. And it, yeah. it wasn't the same, but I'm like, I'm going to look like I copied her. Right. And, just, you know, and it was just, that was, it, it does things like that also slow your progress and they, that feeds that voice of doubt in your head. Yes. But we're also really keenly aware of those things when we do have a passion that we feel like we've not been devoting our all to. Oh, yes. And that's what I was going to say is like competition is good. Healthy competition is good. How I felt that day, like, <gasps> like she's doing you. better than me. Like, duh, like all of this stuff. I mean, literally freaked out how to take a lap around the blog. <laughs> That is not a joke. And I was thinking, you know what? That is so wrong of me because she's allowed to chase her passion. Mm -hmm. She's allowed to be in this market because you know what? Her voice is valuable. My voice is valuable. We're in the same industry, but we have different things to say. Right. And that is okay. Like right. you want to see people that are passionate about the same things as you. Like, I, I mean, I'm going to be honest. Like I'm having to flip that in my mind because usually I'll see people that are in my same track and I'm like, Bah, like we well, need to get rid to of realize them. that just because my mom, my mom raised my sister and I in this way. And I think it's really important, especially as a woman to learn, because I think as women, good, bad, or ugly, our inclination is to think that if somebody else is pretty, that maybe we're not as pretty. Yeah. You know, and, and that's not true. Right. There's always going to be somebody. somebody else has a business. Right. Business There's always going to be. good anymore. Yeah. Somebody prettier, smarter, funnier, more successful. You know, because we're not comparing apples and apples. Yes. But just because somebody has that doesn't mean that they took your piece of the pie. Yeah. Exactly. It doesn't mean that they've like cut in on what you are doing or they've taken your, you know. And it's funny because I'm, I've been really able to. I think to see that in the beauty industry mm -hmm. when I came to that world, because everybody knows no less than 100 beauticians. Yeah. <laughs> Cosmetologist, <laughs> stylist, whatever you would call yourself. That's true. Um, there's a hair salon on there's a every hair corner. salon and a real estate agent. And a Coming Starbucks. to you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, you know, but, but everybody and I love them is all. a potential client. You know, yeah. everybody who has hair is a client and there's plenty of business to go around. Yes. And sometimes it's just a matter of personal preference. And it was funny to me because I was able to see that so um, clearly mm -hmm. in the, the beauty industry. But then when it came to doing something that was new and unique and different that I had, that, that was an idea that I had birthed from start to finish, essentially, it, yeah. I was a lot more territorial over it. Yeah. And that really stunted my progress. It yes. slowed me down because not only was I having to 
find the motivation to keep fighting forward in the business, mm-hmm. but I was also having to spend my energy overcoming this terrible narrative in my head. Oh yeah, same, 100% same. So I would say like as a tangible takeaway for other people that are at that like, they're like, I just imagine, I'm probably gonna give this analogy totally wrong, but like horse races and you're everybody's behind the fence and you're like so geared up to go and then the fence drops and you're like, Oh no! Like yeah, yeah. Th- your, your no energy. Like, your horse lays oh. down. And so, if that's you, if your horse is laying down, is that weird to say? I don't know. <laughs> but you know what we mean. Then I would say, like, if you're if you have the thought, like, oh, they're already doing this, or they're already doing that, or like, look at them, they've already knocked this goal out of the park. It's silly for me to even want to do that, or like, they're running half marathons and I can't even run a mile, which is a literal true story right now. Then don't like just scrap that out of your brain. And I have to tell myself that every day because your, whatever it is, like if you have something inside of you that you want to do, that's going to better you, the world, something that you just can't stop thinking about, it keeps coming back. Then your take on that is needed. Like your voice is still needed in that, that sector. Like don't, the only person, this is so corny and cheesy and feels like probably from a Pinterest quote that I read or pinned at some point, but (laughs) It's the only competition you should be in is with yourself. And this is me, Lauren. Like if I had a mirror, I'd be like, Lauren, the only person that you are competing with is yourself. Like when you go to bed at night and when you wake up the next morning, do you feel good about what you did the day before? Do you feel like that's it? Let the other people live their truth (laughs) and do their thing. But don't let that be why you don't start. Right, right. And I'll take up an offering after this. I think (laughs) that it's also important to to be vulnerable and to be vulnerable to people that um, care about you and that are invested in your success, whatever it is that you're Mm -hmm. doing. You know, my husband doesn't care if I'm doing hair or if I'm raising babies or if I'm decorating Christmas trees. Or if you're doing them all at the same time. Or if I'm doing them all. (laughs) He just wants me to be successful and wants me to be happy. Same with my parents. Same with you. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to be vulnerable to those people in your life and say, I'm having doubts about this. And for them to be the ones that sometimes they have to carry you through that. Sometimes they have to be the energy behind it and and just carry you for a little while yep. because you're not always going to feel motivated. And if we're waiting for yeah. feeling so, to carry us, then we're never going to accomplish anything. Yeah. So sometimes we have to do that and then surround yourself with good people too that yeah. find yourself a hype woman, find yourself a cheerleader, Ooh, find yourself cool. somebody who, um, you know, the parts of your, your business or your idea or your quest whatever it might be yeah. that bog you down find somebody that's good at that that you can talk to them about it and maybe they can give you some like like you did with me you know actionable yeah. steps here's what we need to do next or maybe they just seem like they're good at it but it's a fight that they had to go through as well and so they might have a little tip on how yes. to you know maintain that motivation or you know how to kind of work things you know think about like just from a personal standpoint like if I wanted to start to exercise how do I, you're probably your first inclination is not going to be to go to the most fit and athletic friend that you have and ask them, <laughs> no, how do I'm you do this? To- how do you get up every morning <laughs> at six and go run? But that's probably the exact person you need to go talk to. Yeah, and, that's true. you know, I think that too, that takes down all those barriers of comparison too, yes. because then we see, oh, it's just a real person yeah. that has done this and here's what they did and here's where they struggled. For so sure. I think part of that too is, um, you know, that's probably my catchphrase, I guess, part of that. Part of that. Part of that. Interesting. 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 You part should say that. that. And a part uh, of that. <laughs> um, but I think that it's important to um, know the people in your life that you can call on yes. that can help you through yes. that burnout. For sure. And that just touches back on oh, what we talked about last week and mentorship. And yeah. it sounds so like that word. We need to make up a new word that means that. Because I feel like people think that sounds like so elementary and so like, Ah, like mentor. But I think the thing of it is like, I, I love the idea of having a mentor. I don't love the idea of calling myself a mentee or yeah. whatever you, you know, yeah. like I don't like the reverse. And I'm not going to call you like, I don't my like, mentor. Right. I mean, I don't, or you're not going to call me mentor. That's right. Weird. Like I don't, I think that it implies like a, somebody is, I don't know. Like on a, on a higher, you know, like yeah. the, I don't know. There's a hierarchy. I don't, maybe that's yes. why I don't love that word. We'll come up with another one. We will we'll because it up. is important like to find somebody that you are not going to be able to do it alone. And when you said that about if you're waiting for, to feel motivated, that's like I'm attacked first of all. I'm personally I know, attacked. right? I always feel like that. <laughs> because I have just been personally in such a funk and like social media, man, it does the a really good job of making it seem comparison. like you're 
business is thriving and you're this and that. And like, you know, I do want to use social media to uplift people. So I'm not always going to get on there and be like, right. well, guys, I want to quit everything and yeah. head to, or I about said Toledo. Too, I don't um, even know what Toledo is. And that's <laughs> not where I want to go. Mexico. The other but, thing I think too with social media is that we are not, I, I, I at least am very reticent to share my great successes on there yeah. too, because I know how that makes me feel. And I know it, it it can be a fine line between like yes. celebrating your success and feeling like you're bragging. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's all about how things are perceived, I think. Yes. And it's such a sensitive thing. So I'm even, you know, sometimes my great successes, I want, I'll downplay those. You know, yes. like things will Which happen and I downplay it. I am So I'm against. like, I'm attacking myself on yes. both sides, you know, and then I'm just like You make yourself small there. so you don't like upset anybody. But right. Well, Okay, wrapping up my last thought is like everybody get a mentor. We'll call them something else. We'll call them whatever. But you need somebody that's going to hop you up. You need somebody that can look at you and say, hey, let's do these five things first. Okay, mm-hmm. like before you're winning a Grammy. Not me. <laughs> I am not. Get in the studio. <laughs> yeah. You might want to take a vocal lesson. You might want to take a vocal lesson. <laughs> before you win uh, the national championship of your sport of choice, you might want to throw that ball. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. So yeah. you need those people. And then um, the social media thing. And so I am, I heard somebody say one time, like you, that sometimes like you feel like there's like a reason you feel like you have to make yourself small and like not mm-hmm. celebrate your small victories. Like if it's a victory to you, it doesn't matter like how small it might be on the grand scheme of things. But I do think it's all about perception. But I have a love hate relationship with social media. So oh, I think we all do. I enjoy certain like community aspects of it. And then there's other things that I'm like, oh like this makes me feel terrible about my life and all this stuff. But I'm like, well, you know what? That's a me problem because right. it is good to see like I have to feel inspired. Like not not the feeling, but like I need to be surrounded by people that inspire me. Mm-hmm. I need to be in spaces that inspire me. I need to see other people doing something that might be a little out Mm -hmm. of the box. And usually I would travel to a city or like observe that. And one thing that I've learned, like have noticed through social media is that I can't really go somewhere. I can't go to a conference. I can't be in a big room full of people that are going to get me all um, excited. But I can go to social media and see other people that are kind of, shifting things in their Mm -hmm. chosen field or whatever and so I do think that we do have to work on like how do we celebrate and 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 put things out there without making other people feel bad and I think Bethany a friend of ours who Mm -hmm. also one day you'll hear from she um gave me some constructive feedback on like the first podcast episode I did and I was telling my story Mm -hmm. but what I was trying to do is tell my story in a way that was like hey if I can do it you can too not in a look at me right because let me tell you I was like eating (laughs) Cheez-Its and (laughs) no uh I was okay but I wasn't living the lavish life (laughs) yeah so she was like, I, I like hearing your story. I love it. And I know you, so I know where you're coming from. But, like, you need to put other people in that story. Like, right. make it about – use your story to make it about them. And so that's something that I hope that we do in this podcast. And mm-hmm. I hope that you and I can do on our social media. And I see so many other people do that. It's like when we are celebrating our successes or talking about our failures, like trying to frame it in a way that puts somebody else in in like almost lets them test drive like right like what that story can feel like right, for you so right. and I think you know um part of it is it's so easy to fall prey to what what is considered the norm on social media and I always laugh at myself like for example when it comes to Bell Me Designs I always talk and say like oh well we would love to do that we would love to <laughs> we we, we it's, me and my large team me yeah, and my dog right uh, it's like do you have a mouse in your pocket yeah. because it's you and yeah. or my mom or my dad or my husband if I can bribe them into helping me like but it, I feel like I need to be I need to seem like I have a big t- I don't know you know like yeah. I need to 
to, in order to legitimize what I do, I yeah. feel like I need to be a little bit big for my britches. Yeah. You know, so um, I think being realistic about that, you know, and everybody who's like, who's had me decorate their house, they know it's me and I show up with a rolling <laughs> toolbox. You know, like, it's just me. It's just, I'm the only one you're going to talk to. You it's might like hear you. my kid screaming in the background. Yeah. He's an employee. Let me you know, like, I, for you to customer service and oh, then it's like, it's well, right. hello, yeah, it's me. Exactly. But like no. put on a mustache, like undercover boss. And yes. Like, There's you know. a good balance between that but I think what people what I'm hungry for is just the real right because everybody has imposter syndrome yes. everybody does yes. and that's the thing when you the more business owners the more people that you admire their habits or what they've accomplished in their lives in any facet um, I think the common thread is that at some point all of them felt like they were completely unqualified to do that Yes, and probably still do. Probably still do. Yeah, I feel like I'm, you know, I, because I always feel like that. We should we should always feel that way because mm-hmm. we should always feel like we need to learn more and do better yeah. and keep growing. You know, and every new step into um, you know a new phase of life, whether it's marriage or motherhood or moving or yeah. starting a new business, whatever that might be, it's uncomfortable. Growth is painful, yes, and so is. when you are uncomfortable, you feel like I don't belong here. This is yeah. not, you know, I remember having that moment in the first few weeks that um, Xander was born and thinking, oh my gosh, how, what have I done? Like, <laughs> I don't belong because here. Because it was but so uncomfortable. I'm I was here. like, I'm not somebody's mother, you know, yeah. it, but the longer that you are there, the more. I'm not your mom. Yeah, I'm okay, not your mom. Thought. You no. came out of my body, but I did not. What have I done? Yeah. I, but I think that the, the more comfortable we get with existing in that space, yeah. the more that shines through. And I think that's what people see. And the, the imposter that's syndrome so never goes though, away, yeah. but we get more comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. And I think that's a lot of the, the pain of starting something new is putting yourself into that uncomfortable spot. Yeah. You know, nobody likes to leave a nice comfy bed in the morning to get up. I mean, you might be, you know, be physically uncomfortable if your goal is exercise, or you right. might just be mentally uncomfortable because you are, you know, trying something different. It's rearranged your days. You might be financially uncomfortable because you've given everything to this cause. But I think everybody feels that way when they start something new and realizing you're not alone in that. Yeah. And that imposter syndrome is very real. And it is. is. No one's immune to it. No, nobody. I, I mean, if you listen to any kind of podcast or talk or somebody that you like, hold to this high esteem, they're still going to say the same thing. And that really is encouraging. And so I, I have to remind myself of that all the time. Yeah. I, I run a tech company and I don't even upgrade my phone. Like <laughs> I can't do anything when it comes to stuff like yeah. that. But you know what? So, um, and then we'll uh, start wrapping it up okay. because we can't talk about everything. I was going to say, day. I'm sure this has been really long. But I love that. I'm so excited. But we yeah. got to save some stuff yeah. for the people. But um, where was I going with that about being uncomfortable and a tech company? Oh, people always say like, I can't be on, I can't be on camera. Like I can't be on camera or I can't, I can't do X, Y, or Z, whatever it is. A big thing here at, um, with Ripple, I have to do a lot of content creation and people always say like, how do you do that? Like that, I'm like, do you think? That one day I was just like, I'm going to act like a bobo in front of camera because I know it's going <laughs> to look good and it's going to connect with people. Like, no, it took, it, it would, I would, that was the most uncomfortable thing yeah. in the world for me was talking in front of people. At one point that was very uncomfortable for me. If you know me, that is absurd to think, but ask people that knew me when I was like eight or nine and bring up the words youth explosion and <laughs> they will fill you in. So... That wasn't something that just came easy to me, but Mm -hmm. I had to say, hey, I want to be better at this. I want to create content that enhances my company, that Mm -hmm. enhances my life. And so that's just one example of something that was wildly uncomfortable. There's three cameras right here, and I'm like, right. You know, if I let myself think about it. Yes. But you have to continually expose yourself over and over and over again. But I think, and I don't know that you ever get truly more comfortable with whatever that thing is if it's public speaking like in this situation you always feel nervous you always always feel feel nervous nervous. but you do it more and more so you get more comfortable being uncomfortable yes and that's another thing is like you have like if I have been doing the same things for too long I'm like okay I need to learn to do something new I need I want to feel uncomfortable I want to feel like I don't know something like which is not that hard (laughs) for me to feel like but I think mine is more like physical things like I want to 
have a, I want to start a podcast. I was terrified, mm-hmm. legitimately terrified. That just happened a few months ago. So scared. People are going to think that, uh, this is my thoughts. Like people are going to think, I think I'm an expert. My audio is not good. The video is not good. Blah, blah, blah. Like nobody cares what I have to say. But you know what? I was like, no, I have the urge. For me, I feel like it's a thing from God. And I'm, if it's one person that it encourages through right. my shenanigans then I'm gonna do it and so that was really uncomfortable and then having somebody like do dialogue with I'm like what if I just forget how to have a conversation with somebody but you just have to have what is it like is it three seconds five seconds I don't know Brene Brown I think is who says it like you have to have x amount and it's like under 10 seconds of blind courage and just be like I'm just gonna do it just rip the band-aid off and go just rip the band-aid off and go and so that would be like a definite piece of encouragement is just if just do it. If if it's like putting your art out on the internet, mm-hmm. I'm talking to somebody directly that I know listens to this podcast. If that's what it is, just do it. This is your sign. Like, do it. If it's... Well, and we all go into it afraid. Yes. You just have to say, you know what? I'm just going to do it and be afraid and at the same time. see what happens. You know? And it's not going to be perfect. And that's okay. Right. Nobody's perfect right away. Go go find somebody that you admire. Scroll all the way to the bottom mm-hmm. of their Instagram. Unless you're like me and they deleted all the embarrassing <laughs> stuff. Shouldn't have done that. But there is people that still have all that. Then go look at their web. Go, if you could see the first draft of their website, of their book, yeah. of their whatever, of their fitness journey, of their motherhood journey. I am just a dog mom. But, you know, I know there's people that listen that have kids. So it's just like, just do it. I'm telling you, whoever is listening to this. I'm looking at all three. <laughs> just flipping do it. Just yeah. make a list of five of your five next steps. Mm-hmm. What are my five things that I have to do to get to my end goal? Right. So maybe you should actually identify the end goal. Okay, that goal is going to change. But for right now, what's my end goal? What's my five actionable mm-hmm. steps to do that? And just have the little bit of courage it takes and just put just it out there it. and let's just go from there. Yeah. The other thing that I do when I, with the actionable steps is that in, inevitably there's going to be one that you just don't want to do. And, and you must do it. You must do it. Yes. I was listening to a podcast um, with Mark Batterson. And he, oh, I love him. Yeah, he just wrote a book, um, a book and he was talking about, you know, one of the things, it's how to win the day. And one of the things is eat the frog first. So yes. do that really bad thing first. You know, like do the most uncomfortable thing mm-hmm. or the thing you've been putting off. Do that first. And that, for me, always relieves my brain yes of the energy that I spend given to dreading that and then it gets me a little bit more motivated and inspired to keep going because I've done the hardest thing first so that's another thing too you know with your actionable steps don't let something you know the dread of something paralyze you yes sorry just and just keep moving the other thing too nobody knows what it looks like in your head they just know what you show them and thank God for that yeah you know so (laughs) so when we look at our it made me think about that because you know website so when I looked at the first draft of my website that my husband and I had just fiddled around with and come up with, it looked good. I mean, if I were a stranger looking at that, I would think, yeah, that looks good. But in, it didn't look like what I saw in my head. Yeah. But the people that were going to be taking that in didn't know the vision that was in my head. Yeah. So a lot of times our comparisons that we're going through that make us feel inadequate aren't even real on yes. any other scale except Other our than own. in your head. In my head. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this makes me like channel minor so. pop star, but no, I love all of that. I love all of that. I feel like there's so many things in this episode that we will branch out. Well, and I on. feel like we have just rambled and everybody's going to be like, what in the world? I'm, you know I'm what? just wasted all those minutes. But of my we life. feel good about it. Well, so I hope somebody gets matters. something out of it. And you if know. nothing else, it is that you can take your baby to a Willie concert, Nelson concert. Willie Nelson, if you so choose, and just put the little earmuffs on them, and all is well in the world. So but cute. now I feel like we'll have to post a picture. Yes, of that. we will. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like a picture of us, and then slide over to see Xander at five at months Nelson. old at a Willie Nelson concert. Yeah. We didn't get to meet Willie Nelson, but we did get to meet Lucas. Who's his Lucas? Son. There's a Lucas Nelson. Yeah. Wow. His son. He's great. I have to look him up. He's so talented. He, yeah, amazingly talented. Plays plays in the band with him. And worked, um, I don't know if he wrote some of the music or just, but on A Star Is Born. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, like, super talented. We did get to meet him. So it's still my dream to meet Willie Nelson and Jimmy Buffett. Yes. You little pair of head. I know. But. But, Yeah. So, if anyways, if else, you want to talk about concerts, maybe we'll be- <laughs> concerts or how to be a non-traditional mother. Yes, I'm will. really good at that. No, I love it. But thank you so thank you much. Thank you so much for having it's me been on. Very interesting. Yes. To have you here. I'm like, I don't know what to do with my hands sometimes. I know, so I like weird. periodically move. But anyway, yes, I think this is awesome. And who knows? Maybe you're going to see Lindsay again. 
Maybe. Maybe so. All right. Well, I, I really don't have like a grand oh. Well, here exit, comes the train. So I think that's yeah. time. We it's literally like the music hear the started train coming. and they pull you off stage, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm well, just the train's awkward. here. It's time to go. I, I'm literally just awkwardly like tap dancing under the table right now. Okay, everybody. <laughs> if you like this, I hope that you will subscribe to the podcast share it on instagram yeah. do whatever only only if it helped you if it didn't help you don't but if it did please do Lindsay. it's been a pleasure doing business with you today <laughs> sister <laughs> we can also do that okay <laughs> all right well that's a wrap and we'll see you soon cut